Prayers. Almighty God, who in your wisdom and goodness has appointed the offices of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society, good of all human lives upon it, and the just government of its people, we beseech you to look with your abundant favor upon us, your servants, whom you have entrusted with the performance of such important trust in this community. Let your blessings descend upon us, your assembly, and the grant that we may treat and consider all matters that shall come under our attention and deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of this region and of those whose interests you have committed to us. Amen. Order number one, communication from the chair. Good morning, honorable members. I welcome you all to this last days, last day of sitting in Kigali. If you remember, it is on 19th of December, 2020, 2022, that we started our job. And uh, on 19th December, 2023, this fifth assembly will be making one year in office. We shall need to take stock of our achievements and challenges. And uh, the EAC Council has now received a eighth Partner state, eighth member, and uh, EAC requires contribution and the participation of all of us if we want to achieve a people centered and market driven cooperation. We therefore have a task that we must accomplish together to make EAC known and visible in the partner states the people we represent need to understand the importance of and benefits of belonging to the AC, and no one can do this better than us, the people's representative. I therefore reiterate the position of various submissions made by the members that the council needs to, to organize joint fora and create avenues to publicize the community and to put more resources in the assembly to undertake outreach and sanitization activities as recommended by some members of the summit. Honorable members, we are facing these interparliamentary games, which will commence tomorrow. We'll start with, with this game, with this match with Rwanda, Rwanda team, because we will open this event. I encourage all members to be ready and attend these 
game that we'll play tomorrow afternoon. Maybe we should have a short city today and, and discuss it, discuss this matter again. This is the communication I had to, to address you on this item number one. Order number two, <laughs> motion for a resolution of the assembly to urgently facilitate and support mothers of newborn children in the service of the community motion. Honorable Iman Falada. Procedure, Madam Speaker. Yes, Honorable. Yes, Honorable King. Madam Speaker. I raise the point of procedure of this house on Rule 12 on the quorum. I beg to move. Honorable Kim, Honorable Kim Guy, you mentioned Rule 12. We you would like to know more what, it, what you mean. Madam Speaker, I have to mention the Rule 12. Uh, rule 12 is very clear. Yeah, the Surgeon Army and our clerk, they have to are sent by partner state. And what I'm saying, our members from DRC are not in this house. It's okay. No, we don't want all that one. It's our office of collect that are going to ascendate with chapter by chapter. Why? What is your problem? If they're there, if they're there, they will tell us every chapter is there. Why don't we speak up? The rule is very clear. We are going chapter by chapter. Quorum are not there. And I raise the point of procedure in this house. You cannot tell me if they are there. The, when they are there, the, the, the clerk and surgeon army, they will tell us they are there or they are not there. Don't tell me that they are there. No. Honorable Kim. Yes. Honorable Kim, you don't need to raise your voice. You don't need to, to be emotional. <laughs> You don't need to be emotional. We are all members of this house. So just just relax. Don't be so as right as because as I raise the point of procedure. And I say it rule 12. Rule 12 is very clear. I read the point of procedure and rule 12 is very clear. There are no any somebody can point stop me to raise for procedure or rule twelve point of order. in this house. Point of order. Point of order. Rule twelve is very clear. Order. Point of order. We have heard order questions. speaker. Honorable speaker. Order speaker. Point honorable, of order. Honorable members. Right. Right. Point right to order. Honorable speaker. <laughs> point of order. The man of debate in this house sit. is known. You, can you please sit down? All of you, I give the floor to Honorable Sankok and Honorable Kakoza. Then Honorable Speaker, I raise on a point of order that the rules 
whenever the speaker is speaking, all of us must respect the speaker. Honorable speaker, you can't raise a voice against the speaker. Honorable Kim is out of order. And yesterday, he was still raising the voice, saying that enemies are in front of him. Now the enemies are behind the Council of Ministers uh, desk, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, please, whenever you are speaking, let us all freeze, let us all respect the speaker. I beg to submit. Thank you, Honorable Kakoza. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to raise an order for my for to my colleague, really to look at Rule Thirty Seven. Rule Thirty Seven is very very elaborate. You must have a respect of the House and the Speaker. And when the speaker is speaking, you must listen and other members must listen. Is the Honorable King in order not to respect the colleagues, the speaker, and even the decorum of this house? Is he in order? You, thank you. In my opinion, Honorable Kimi Gai, you are out of order. And, uh, and we proceed. Honorable Iman Falada, move the motion. Procedure. Right on the speaker. I cannot be out of order when I raise a point of procedure. I raise a point of procedure on Rule 12. And Rule 12 is very clear of this house. I'm a lawyer. No somebody can tell me that I'm out of order in this house. I raise a point of procedure on based on Rule 12. This out cannot proceed illegally until we have to make sure that this rule 12, we are going on it. And I raise this rule procedure. I cannot be out of order. I know somebody in this house can tell me I'm out of order. No one, even the speaker. I raise a point of procedure point on rule 12. Until rule 12, are point saying order, Mr. Speaker. the quorum are in place, Please. now I can make sure that I am in order. Please. But I raise a point of procedure or rule 12. I run on procedure, speaker. procedure, Mr. Speaker. Point procedure. Of, point of order. I suspend this procedure. Honorable members. Honorable members. Point I, of order. I suspend for 10 minutes.
Thank you. You can. So I'm sure. Resumption. Honorable members, when Honorable Kim Guy raised the issue on Rule 12, I requested him to clarify, and it was not clear. And he stated that the DRC members were not present. But we could not proceed with his request because we had already a certain quorum and uh, the DRC members were present virtually. And uh, we had virtually Honorable Bulu Ipenda Desire, Honorable Masri Kanganiza Dorote, Honorable Moetaminwa Nyota Stella, and Honorable Ngate Mangu Francois. Um, and before Honorable Falada, before moving her motion, I would like to remind you, to remind the House of Rule 50 and 52 and the consequences of breaching the rules. Rule 50 Article 50 talk about order in the house and in the committee. 52 talks about a suspension of members. And then in break one, the rule said that whenever the conduct of a member is grossly disorderly, and in the opinion of the speaker of the chairperson or the chairperson, it cannot be adequately addressed under sub rule four of rule 50, he or she may name the member. Whenever a member is named by the speaker or the chairperson, then if the offense has been committed by such member in the house, a motion shall immediately be moved by another member requesting the speaker to, sus to suspend the member named from the service of the house, or if the offense has been committed in the committee of the whole house, the chairperson shall immediately leave the chair and report the circumstances to the house, and the member shall there and then move a motion requesting the speaker to suspend the member named from the house and other things. Honorable members, let's proceed. I invite Honorable Falada to move her motion and continue.
right honorable speaker a motion for a resolution of assembly recommending to the council of ministers to urgently facilitate and support mothers of newborn and infant children in the service of the community moved under article 53e 6d 95492d and 51 121 of the treaty article 392c of the common market protocol and rule 26 of the rules of procedure of the assembly whereas the partner state committed under article 53e of the treaty to mainstream gender in all the endeavors of the community and to enhance the role of women in cultural, social, political, economical, and technological development as one of the strategies of attaining the objectives of the community. And whereas Article 51 of the treaty, a section four of East African Legislative Assembly Election Act 2012 provide for gender representation through affirmative action at the least one third of the elected members from each partner state and Article 95 of the treaty requires gender balance in the appointment of staff and composition of the institution of the community. Recalling the commitment of the partner state in Article 121A and D of the treaty to promote the empowerment and effective integration and participation of women in all levels of social economic development, especially in the decision making and to adopt technologies which uh, will ensure the stability of employment and professional progress for women workers in the community. Appreciating the Council for adopting East Africa community gender policy in 2008, which en enshrines the principle of equal opportunities and equality of gender and e equity of gender in the employment sector through enabling policy and legislations. Recognizing that the Fifth Assembly is comprises of 25 female elected members and at least two ex-official members who represent at least 41% of the membership of the assembly. Aware that the 42nd meeting of the Council of Ministers held on 12 July 2022 observed that the EAC headquarters did not have facilities for young parents to attend to infants during working hours, and that there is a need to the community to consider establishing a daycare center to facilitate and enable young mothers to attend to their children during working hours. Further aware that the National Assembly is some of the partners in some of the partner states, including Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda have taken command active um, step to facilitate, empower, and support uh, female members and staff to deal with their full-time job and motherhood, including uh, settling, setting up a daycare and nursery facilities within the precinct of the parliament. Noting that the World Health Organization and UNICEF recommend nurturing infants exclusively by breastfeeding, uh, bottle feeding as important uh, foundation for health life that secures uh, bonding and attachment between the mother and their newborn. Enhancing uh, cognitive development and um, reducing child, childhood and, and maternal illness, thus lowering healthcare costs and strengthening societies. Conclusion, uh, con 
conscious that supporting a gender parity at workplace, including facilitating and supporting professional and personal life integration through family uh, friendly policy and initiative initiatives such as setting up um, a tailored and appropriate facilities for nursing and expressing mothers as well as childcare. Concerned that despite the existing EAC gender sensitive legal um, policy framework, female workers, judges, and legislators which are in the service of the EAC have not been properly facilitated and supported in the discharge of their responsibilities and to take up opportunities to serve the community. Convinced that um, creating an enabling working environment uh, for mothers will support, facilitate, and improve mothers and all females in services of community and enhance their services. Now, therefore, be, be it resolved by the assembly as follows, that in accordance with Article 5.3e, 6d, 5.3e, Forty nine two D fifty one one two one of the treaty and the rule twenty six of the rules of procedures of the assembly, the assembly recommends to the uh, Council of Ministers one A to adapt and implement policies and programs to provide an enabling work environment for working mothers in the service of the community and the newborn um, on infant newborn or infant children. B, to establish a daycare center at the EAC headquarters and in all institutions to facilitate and enable mothers to attend to their children during working hours. C, to provide travel and related expenses to persons assisting mothers who are required to travel with the infants on official business. Is the speaker? I beg to move. Thank you, Honorable Imana. In my mother tongue, Imana means God. When you'll be in, in my country, and they will say that your name is Imana, everyone will start praying on his knee. Mr. Speaker, I am Iman, not Imana. Iman? Yes, with no A. Ah. Which, which also refers faith. Faith? Not God. It's the same. So, honorable members, the motion we have on the floor is that this assembly do resolve to add the East African Community Council of Ministers to urgently facilitate and support mothers of newborn and infant children in the service of the community. Debate is open. We have, um, let's start by Honorable Guiding. Please, Clark, get the list ready. Honorable Guiding, then Honorable Dr. Makame, then Honorable Akol Rose, Honorable Kim Guy, and Honorable Kadogo, and Honorable Blacks, and Honorable Aisha, 
and then Honorable Clement, Honorable Mary, Honorable uh, Caroline, Honorable uh, Sankok, and Honorable Dr. Ito. Please take three minutes. Do not go beyond. I mean, three minutes, in, not in Africans, or I don't know, but three minutes that they are. Okay. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, and I do promise to be very brief. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to um, contribute to uh, this very important motion. And I would like to start by thanking uh, Honorable Falhada for this uh, timely motion. Um, right Honorable Speaker, um, it is imperative that we uh, recognize the invaluable contributions uh, of mothers uh, in our region. Uh, who not only nurture future generations in our region, but also who wish to continue to serve our community. Uh, to enable this to be done effectively, right, Honorable Speaker, I support wholeheartedly the uh, steps that were mentioned in the motion, such as providing uh, suitable facilities uh, for these mothers to continue to take care of their uh, children while also contributing to the uh, uh, region, contributing actually to nurturing our future generation. These children are going to be the future generation of the uh, of, of, of our region. Uh, motherhood, right honorable speaker, is an extraordinary journey that is fraught with sacrifices. And as a mother, sometimes it is very difficult for you to decide whether to spend the time looking after your children or decide for your career, which both are really important, right, Honorable Speaker. Um, and I think not only advocating for providing facilities and benefits for our mothers within uh, our assembly, but I think that should also, right, Honorable Speaker, extend to all of our institution within the region. Not only our institutions, because we have got, of course, mothers working with us in all various institutions in our partner states, but also looking at the same benefits for all mothers within the region. Uh, this could also look at uh, advocating for good policies in the partner states to do with paid par uh, par par parental leave, providing such facilities in all of our companies and in all of our uh, regions. This could also entail looking at ways in incentivizing employers, right, Honorable Speaker, who are able to provide uh, uh, benefits and facilities for future mothers. We make a big portion of society and to for us to benefit, right, Honorable Speaker, it will be a shame when you have such a large workforce that are not able to contribute because they have to decide between priorities of looking after their children or contributing to the uh, economic growth of our region. So right on the speaker, in conclusion, I wholeheartedly support this motion. And I think we need to, as legislators, to take this on board and seriously look at ways in which we can assist the uh, Council of Ministers to look at how this can be implemented. I uh, submit right honorable speaker and I support the motion. Thank you. Who's the next? The next Mr. speaker, thank you. Honorable Makame, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the floor to air my voice to support this important motion. Mr. Speaker, the reason why I'm raising here today to support this motion is because, Mr. Speaker, no one in this entire the uniqueness of motherhood is that when you are an infant, you cannot speak. You cannot even turn around. The mother will know when you need to be fed and if you are sick. Mr. Speaker, it takes a lot of 
talent and commitment to do that job. And uh, what this motion is really uh, calling is for a resolution to enable and facilitate mothers to do that job in their different areas. And now in the East African community where they'll be working. And uh, we, 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 we value that uh, they are doing a good job as legislators, as uh, judges in the East African Court of Justice, and as uh, employees of the community. And uh, facilitating them to do their work even better while their hearts are at rest, being assured that the facilities are accommodating their needs. Uh, that is what we should be doing. So Mr. Speaker, I just stood to air my voice in support of that. And also, Mr. Speaker, to invoke Rule 31.3 to add an additional recommendation that will be D, that will be to consider developing an ESC regional law on gender issues. Because that is the, one of the issues that they, I'm, I'm begging the council to consider. But uh, uh, with that, Mr. Speaker, when, when they're talking gender, it, it, it comes matters of sexuality. And the sexuality in ESC and in our culture, it is males and females and not others. Mr. Speaker, I beg to submit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Makame. Now, Honorable Akoro Rose. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to air my views on this motion. And I rise in support of this motion presented by Honorable Imani. And I want to thank her for this long overdue motion, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, the issue of child rights. When we talk about child rights, it's a serious violation that we are talking about here by not providing the healthcare facilities at the place of work, especially the daycare for these children. So that the mothers are comfortable coming to work <clears throat> when their children are well taken care of. Second, the right one was speaker. I want to mobilize all my female colleagues here that uh, as we amend our rules of procedure, we should also provide for maternity leave <clears throat> for members of parliament who may produce uh, and have the opportunity to have children during their term of office as members of parliament of Iala. There is nothing in our rules that provides for that. I want to give an example in Iala 4 where a mother, I want to call it mistreated with her baby. There was no maternity leave and she was called upon to come and work. Now, she had to travel, to travel all the way from, I think by then it was Canada. She had to travel two nights with a baby less than one month old, I think it was two weeks old, with a caretaker. On arrival at the meeting place, she was even denied her per diem. She was denied her per diem that she arrived late. And yet she took the travel, the, tra the, the, the travel to travel with this less than a month old baby. But because the journey was long, she arrived when we were almost concluding and she was denied. So right now, speaker, this is a serious matter, matter bordering on the rights of violation of the rights of these infants, and it needs to be addressed. So the two issues are a daycare facility, as they provided for in this motion, but for us, the ladies here, let's have a separate agenda or a separate motion during the, the rules, when we are considering the rules, to have the rules amended to provide for paid leave. Paid leave, not unpaid. It must be paid leave for our young mothers. And I'm happy to note that we have quite a number here and they, they need to, to be taken care of. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Akol Rose. Now, Honorable Kim Guy. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. And uh, I go to thank too much 
my good colleague, Honorable Iman, bring this motion. And I will talk on myself that I have two wives. <laughs> I'm a true African who are not believe in Western God called Jesus or Arab God called Muhammad with no contradiction. I believe in myself as African true leader. And the issue, you bring this one here now. I'm very proud on that one. I know many of you, they say it, even this country where we are hosting now, they say it, one man, one woman. But which country? The man and woman can survive only for each other. No. But we are for 10. Even the Western country that is called us, one man and one woman, they call themselves Fatna. But in Africa, man is in charge. Man is in charge. Point of for... order, right, Honorable Speaker. Relevance. On this one. Point of order, right, Honorable Speaker. Yes, Honorable Dangiza, point of order. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Whereas I appreciate that Honorable Kim attempted to speak on this motion, but I think he's out of order. If you look at the motion, it is the motion for resolution of the assembly recommending to the Council of Ministers to urgently facilitate and support mothers of newborn and infant children in the service of the community. And now he's bringing controversial issues about God and we are all very sensitive about to challenging countries and the, their options. Because like here, the law is very clear on issues of uh, uh, marriage. marriage, marriage rights. But I know every country has its own way of managing these marriage rights. And I think you should respect it because we have to abide by our constitution. So I really want to urge my brother to focus on the motion. And this is a very substantial motion. We're talking about the lives of mothers and children. Yeah. So it shouldn't divert us from the motion. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable, Honorable Kim Guy, you should stick to the motion only. And nothing. <laughs> thank, thank you, Honourable Speaker. This you know, is the problem of Africa. They want to massage everything, but when you come to the fact, we talk about the mother and service for the mother and the child. But who brought who, who bring the child? Is a mother and the father. Is a mother and father. <laughs> I am telling you. I declare no any member here in the house. Whether he's a man or he's a woman in this house, they cannot declare. I declare I have two wives. We are fraud as a king guy. I take care of my wife and my children. But here, my, you know, those women, they can say, no, do this one. They have more than two out of the, 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 the part of the child. They are protected. Order, right, honorable speaker. Honorable. Order. Right, Honorable Speaker, I think you should find a way to deal with some unacceptable behaviors. We are members of the parliament. We are actually professionals, and we must conduct ourselves in a way that reflects the rules of procedure and the standard that is required of all the members of the parliament. Honorable Kim guy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, honorable speaker. Honorable Kim. Yeah, sorry. Please behave. Please behave. Right now, speaker, I stand guide. I don't know how I'm going to behave when I'm debating. Because I'm debating the motion. And the way of the motion, how I can behave. Because he's talking about taking care of mother and taking care of child. I don't know how I can behave. Because this behave I'm going to behave, I'm telling the truth. 
if the truth I'm telling in this house and in the community is not right for this house, for people who are pretending, they are not supporting their wife. Procedure, Mr. Speaker. Yes, procedure. Mr. Speaker, I'm raising on procedure rule 54. Rule 54. Rule 50, number four. Mr. Speaker, if you allow me to read it in verbatim so that the House can benefit for members who, have, who don't, didn't have their rules, it reads, if a member persists in irrelevance or tedious repetitions or uses objectionable words or and on being called to order fails to retract or explain the words and offer an apology to the satisfaction of the Speaker, any member may move that the member using the objectionable words be no longer heard and the question of that motion shall be put without amendment of debate. So, Mr. Speaker, I just beg that uh, we proceed with the debate of the motion, and uh, Honorable Kim has elapsed his three minutes. So we continue to hear the other members. I beg to move, Mr. Speaker. So have you moved your motion? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Invoking Rule 54, and uh, considering that you, you guided uh, this house that we are going to use three minutes in uh, presenting the debate, and uh, because we have to conclude this um, matter and uh, other members have to would also desire to debate. So we'd like to have the honorable member who is on the floor to, con to have been regarded as he has concluded his three minutes so that the others in take their turn. I beg to move, Mr. Speaker. You have seconders? Honorable James, Honorable Caroline, and others. Honorable members. Honorable Makame has brought a motion. And they, he explained to us what it means. And uh, this Article 50, Chapter 4. And uh, now I put the question that those who are in favor of his motion say aye. Those who are against say nay. The aye. eyes have it. No, you cannot talk. Honorable, now we continue with Honorable Black Siranda. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to join my colleagues in appreciating the Honorable Imani for this timely motion. Right Honorable Speaker, under Article 212, under Article 121, the role of women in socioeconomic development. Right Honorable Speaker, this motion is timely to allow women to participate timely in terms of the socioeconomic growth of this community, to contribute on the well-being of this community. Right, Honorable Speaker, the question of provision for space for maintaining and managing our children is very timely because the children are for both men and women. And the children, as citizens of the community, and the children, right honorable speaker, are the future for this community. Therefore, the growth and upbringing of the children is timely and it is important for the growth of the child. Breastfeeding is a right of a child. Right honorable speaker, the provision for this space will allow both the women of this community, but also the children 
to enjoy their full rights. Right, Honorable Speaker, in that spirit, I also want to agree with Honorable a call, but amend that the rules alone will look at the members. But the community where we serve from is not only for members. We look at a policy where we can also maybe come up with a policy so that all women, female that work within the community, can have a policy that allows them in terms of the maternity, but also the paternity leave so that it is more inclusive. You, When you talk about uh, maternity, you also talk about the paternity leave because this is for all of us in terms of upbringing, management, and supporting the mother at the time when she's just given birth. Right, Honorable Speaker, I don't want to say a lot of things, but uh, I think the rules only work for the members, but we can look for a more inclusive, maybe get a policy uh, that will, will address issues of leave, maternity leave and paternity leave, and what are the benefits when you are taking that specific leave to do that duty that God assigned. I beg to support the, the motion. Thank you. Can you honorable, honorable Blacks? Now, Honorable Aisha. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Um, I stand uh, to support the motion raised by Honorable Iman. Uh, many things have been said, uh, but I would like to focus on the breastfeeding Right, Honorable Speaker, uh, breastfeeding is a right uh, to uh, to our child. And uh, while we're looking to World Health Organization, uh, this uh, this breastfeeding it is exclusively allowed for the first uh, six months uh, of life of the, the the children to let him uh, having a good health. So while we're looking in East African community, we have a high population where uh, use is more than 50%. And we need really a use with the, which is able uh, mentally and physically uh, to work for the development of our, our community. So having uh, this breastfeeding will ensure really if we'll have a uh, good growth development, but having uh, people who have a sufficient uh, intelligence and to, to, to work for our development. So, and I think this is a right for our, our mothers because being in a such position, uh, don't allow as to give birth. So this is really our fundamental right to give birth, but also we have uh, also to work. So we need really uh, all those facilities in other parts uh, to let give us our right, but also to ensure that our young generation is in good, uh, in good hands and they will be really efficient for the development of our community. I beg to support uh, to support, and I beg to submit, right, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Aisha. Now, Clement, Honorable Clement. Uh, thank you, right, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to second the, the motion brought to the House by Honorable Iman Farada, the call. I second the motion to urgently facilitate and support mothers of newborn and infant child in the service of the community for the following reasons. Right, Honorable Speaker, it is the best practice done in other institutions to facilitate infant children development. The support and facilitation of mothers of newborn and infant children in the service community we provide the babies a strong and continuous model of, for intimate relationship with the mother and foster a sense of security and the positive self-esteem. Right, Honorable Speaker, separating mother and newborn or delaying cares can affect negatively the life of the newborn and infant children development. In the facilitation and the support, mothers will get opportunity to take care of the newborn, feeding them timely. Like the Honorable Speaker, newborn are fragile, and most of the time uh, they are sick 
when they are not taken care of by mothers. Before I conclude uh, my support, uh, right honorable speaker, I want to quote Abrams. I quote, to achieve our goals of educating bold and ambitious children, we must invest in enriching equality area child care and learning, end of the quote. A child life is like a piece of paper on which every person leaves a mark. Let the Honorable Speaker, let us give the opportunity to the mother to make a lot of marks to her newborn. I submit, like Honorable Speaker. Honorable Mary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I also raise to add my um, voice in thanking the Honorable Iman for a timely motion. This is very thoughtful of you, not only as a woman, but as a young woman who actually could easily be a beneficiary of this uh, undertaking. Mr. Speaker, Parliament, most parliaments, most civilized institutions worldwide today would have child care facilities in recognition of the fact that young women still in childbearing age are having children and it is not easy for a mother to leave a child, particularly a very young child at home and come and concentrate at her place of work. I would uh, understand that the EAC has been bothered as a starting institution with so many financial responsibilities that compete for attention. But surely this is one of the priorities that we should look at. And actually we should start with our headquarters in Arusha where we have a number of institutions and organs in one location. And I know that it is an anomaly actually that there are fewer women in the, in the institutions of EAC than men. And yet we know that women comprise more than half of the population of EAC. And yet we know that women today are well educated skilled and can compete for jobs. But we also realize that many of those jobs are also political appointments. And this is time to say women are underrepresented and while they are in service, they need to be facilitated to do their work well and professionally. You can imagine a breastfeeding mother who lives a number of kilometers away and has to leave work to go and breastfeed. Many employees do not want to have such, uh, such women on their team because they are encumbrances, but it can be made easier. And I want to refer to Article 5E of the treaty, which clearly talks about the mainstreaming of gender in all its endeavors and the enhancement of the role of women in cultural, social, political, economic, and technological development. That is, and the treaty is the fundamental law, a custody of all the laws that we make uh, in ESC. So thank you, Honorable Iman. I know my time is almost over. Let's start with Arusha, and then we spread to all EAC institutions, wherever they are. Uh, and I don't think that it is a very expensive, uh, uh, costly uh, addition to our budget to cater for this uh, child caring institution. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Mary Mugeni. Now, Honorable Caroline. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker for giving me the opportunity to also support this motion um, brought by my sister, Honorable Iman. 
we've been saying that it's a timely motion, but I really feel that it's not really timely. It's It was needed yesterday. I was surprised when I read it. It was needed many, many years ago. It's very surprising that something as basic as this, which is an international best practice, is lacking in this in the ESC. We've been talking about gender mainstreaming. It's in the treaty. It's and we've had so many debates. We've formed a, a women caucus, which we the strategy plan, which we launched, uh, um, which we uh, discussed a few days ago. And we've been talking about big things, big things, gender budgeting, gender mainstreaming, those big broad things, and something as basic as this, which is an example of a gender sensitive policy very crucial for advancing gender equality and empowering all individuals. It addresses the specific needs of women child, of a childbearing age. These are not, this is not theory. If there are no policies like this, then you're denying the opportunities of, for, 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 of, of uh, the contributions of a young productive woman. So this is a very, very essential thing that does not take much. We are talking about, yes, uh, Honorable Mary has said that the, 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 the community has been um, engaged in many other things, and which is true, but it's, it's, to be fair, it's not, some, it's not too much to ask for. It's something very basic that doesn't take a lot of resources. We were, when we were discussing the budget this year, we were shocked and surprised to find that I think there's a, there's a gender office in the secretariat, very under budgeted, very understaffed. I think it's just a desk, if I'm not mistaken, or you know, one or two, three individuals. I do not know exactly what they are doing. If they can, some I, I don't even know if the, 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 there's a gender strategy in the ESC, I'm not so sure, but these are low hanging fruits that should have, should, should be in place and do not take any any uh, such a grand budget. This motion, I support the motion, and I and propose that it's something that can be done right away without any long processes. I submit, right, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Caroline. Now, Honorable Kadogo. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to debate on this very important motion. I stand to support the motion to have daycare facilities at workplaces, including at EEC. The reason why we should have daycare facilities is because the breastfeeding mothers, they don't have enough maternity leave. Um, most countries, they give uh, maternity leave, which is not really adequate. I can give an example of Uganda that mothers are, gi are given a maternity leave of eight months. Rwanda, mothers are given a maternity leave of 12 months, including Burundi, mothers are given maternity leave of 12 months. And yet, babies are supposed to be breastfed for 24 months, that is two years. So it is very important to have daycare facilities to enable mothers to continue with breastfeeding of their children. Because breastfeeding is very important because if a child is breastfed, will not have, will not have challenges of diseases because breastfeeding protects uh, allergies, protects diabetes, it protects so, so many diseases. So I support the motion to have daycare facilities for breastfeeding mothers. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Kadogo. Now, Honorable Sankok. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this time. Honorable Speaker, I'm one of those ambassadors who are here for she. Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, what uh, Honorable Falahada Imam is uh, proposing is not rocket science. It's something that I've been done in Uganda, Kenya, United Republic of Tanzania, and 
it have done it have been done all over the world where we can benchmark and have the best practices honorable speaker honorable speaker here in rwanda 55% minister, ministers are female and 61% members of parliament here in rwanda are female honorable speaker you can imagine if that huge population uh, around in, in rwanda five committees of parliament are being chaired by female colleagues. You can imagine the workload that they have and if they have to go home to breastfeed before they come and chair committees, honorable speaker. So it's something- that Information, Mr. Done. Speaker. Information. I just uh, wanted to add to my colleague that not only does Rwanda have those good statistics in gender, but Rwanda is doing very well in terms of development and gender order. So that's a good example, thank you. Information accepted, Honorable Speaker, and uh, I've always said that Kigali will be the capital city of the United States of Africa because uh, the president, His Excellency Paul Kagame, is one of the best presidents we have in Africa. Honorable Speaker, again, uh, here in this assembly, 41% are female colleagues. And I've analyzed, Honorable Speaker, from all angles, and almost 90% of them are still within the childbearing uh, uh, bracket, Honorable Speaker. And 60% of them are uh, youthful, Honorable Speaker. So Honorable Speaker, this one is timely and it will benefit not only our staff and the whole information, the city, but also uh, benefit our information, Honorable Speaker. I'm not taking the information, Honorable Speaker. I'm not taking at all. So, Honorable Speaker, <laughs> Honorable Speaker, you can imagine if a committee is being chaired by a female colleague, and now that she's absent because there is no daycare within her reach, then it means that it will be chaired by either the assistant or somebody again appointed. For how long? And we need them to be able to breastfeed their child exclusively for almost... Uh, uh, two years, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, gender mainstreaming is extremely important uh, for all of us, Honorable Speaker. And we mean, when we say gender, we mean female and male, full stop. The other issues of LGBT, we don't, we don't take care of those ones, Honorable Speaker, in this house. Honorable Speaker, lastly, because I'm here as uh, for he, for she, I also request all of us to be ambassadors of mainstreaming issues of personal disability within IALA and ESC. Imagine in our headquarter in Arusha, the big people park their cars blocking the ramp that was provided for personal disability to pass with their wheelchair. So you cannot pass with your wheelchair. There was one person with disability from the United Republic of Tanzania who visited me. And we had to carry him through the, 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 the stairs, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, even if we are we are we are person with disability, we have some little dignity left in us. We feel not good when we are being carried like sacks of potatoes all over the stairs. Yes, the ram is there, but it was blocked by a big man. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and I support. Thank you, Honorable Sanko. Now we have Honorable Dr. Ito. And... Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. I rise to support the motion raised by Honorable Falhada about support to young mothers. Right Honorable Speaker, I'm now a grandmother, but I can painfully remember how I dreaded taking a call from home because I was not sure whether my child was dying, whether I had diarrhea or whether I had what. It's very, very frustrating, but also very debilitating because you can't think of what to do next when you get such call and when your child is not around and when you can't visit that child because they are five miles away. Right, Honorable Speaker, for me, it's embarrassing. 40 years later, I still witness young ladies 
in their effort to nurture their children, take care of families, they still go through the same experiences as myself. It's really very embarrassing and it's very painful. In fact, it's worse because in South Sudan, young women think politics belong to old people like myself because we, you have to wait until you have no worries about children and home before you can engage in representing people. And that is a very wrong message. Very wrong message. Right Honorable Speaker, I appreciate that there has been progress. The fact that the uh, policies, the fact that uh, in some countries, in partner states, women have uh, three months holiday and paid for holiday, six months paid for holiday, but Right Honorable Speaker, that's not enough. Those holidays do not correct the unfriendly environment that women meet in workplaces, especially in EAC institutions. There is nothing to show that there are women mothers working in those institutions of EAC because of total absence of anything that will make a woman comfortable or a lactating mother comfortable. So uh, to be short, I would want to support fully uh, the last two recommendations uh, by, uh, in this uh, provision, one is creating uh, a daycare center so that a woman does not have to fear, care, and worry. In, uh, and that would give her time to focus on the work that they have to do. And that way they can progress faster. The second thing is uh, providing allowances for the day, you know, the person who takes care of the baby, because it is that care that allows for the woman to participate. And if a, a, a mother has to travel somewhere on an ESC function, I think it's in place to give tickets mm -hmm. and our allowances to that person accompanying this uh, employee so that somebody is taking care of that baby as she takes care of the EAC job. So right honorable speaker, I think my three minutes are off, but I really emphasize that those two uh, need to be taken care of. They may not be that expensive, but the impact it will make on uh, the women contribution to, uh, to integration and to the activities of uh, EAC will be very great. I read, I, I, I submit right honorable speaker. Thank you, Honorable Anne. Now the last one, Honorable Ambassador Ndangiza. You have the floor. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I stand to support the motion by Honorable Falhada of uh, supporting mothers of the newborn and infant children in the service of the community. And this is a very timely motion. And as the Ella Women Caucus, we are so happy that this motion has come, although it's long overdue. Right Honorable Speaker, as we all know, EAC is a community that is committed to gender equality and mainstreaming of gender across the board. Starting from Article 5, three of uh, our treaty, but also Article 6 that talks about fundamental principles of our community, including the issue of gender mainstreaming. And of course, we also have clear articles on Article, I think, 120, Chapter 121 and 122 about the role of women in socioeconomic development. We cannot talk about the role of women in socioeconomic development when mothers working for the community do not have space to breastfeed their children. But you should also be mindful that this community, the future of this community lies in the young people. So if these children are not catered for and there is no space to care for them, including daycares, we cannot be assured of the future generation of this community.
Information. Yes, accepted. Mission. Honorable. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, and thank you, Honorable Ndangiza, for giving me some minutes to give you information. I wanted to beef up your, your submission, especially on the issue of breastfeeding. Uh, Suboptimal sub sub uh, breastfeeding is responsible for 96% of death among children under 12 months of age in developing countries. I think that's a very huge statistics. Uh, but globally, uh, about 595,000 uh, children death are attributed to not provided by proper breastfeeding annually. But not only that, even optimal uh, breastfeed also has the potential to prevent an additional death of about a thousand, uh, a hundred thousand death of mothers from cancer and also type uh, type two diabetes. So I wanted to add uh, on that. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Doctor Wada, for beefing that because Doctor Shogo, sure. very sorry. Yes, so I, I think the statistics speak louder, and uh, of course, all those statistics when you analyze them, it's mainly in Sub-Saharan Africa, and of course, Eastern Africa is is also part of that. So, right, Honorable Speaker. Really, this is a timely motion, and I'm happy that the council is here. Establishing a daycare center at ES headquarters and all institutions to facilitate and enable mothers to attend to their children during working hours. In our view, is something that we think can be doable. And I would like to urge our council that all the institutions of the community, and we know many institutions at the moment are constructing headquarters. Let it be a priority and also an obligation that at least in every ESC headquarter we have a daycare center. I think that one will be a strong commitment by this community. We know the East African, uh, uh, the Lake Victoria Basin Commission is constructing, even the one of science and technology Will very soon will be constructing a headquarter. The one in Burundi, the that is in charge of the health, the health commission. I think we can even the the one that is in charge of, I think I see uh, the Inter University Council. All these institutions are constructing buildings. Let's ensure that there is a daycare center. But even at the headquarters in Arusha, which is the face of this community. There are spaces that can be created. It doesn't require a lot. We can even dedicate some rooms to start with. And I also, right honorable speaker, I think, and our clerk, this is something that can be done. So the next time we are in Arusha, there is a daycare center. We have to walk the talk. With that, right honorable speaker, I beg to support the motion. We are a community that is championing human rights and human rights Fundamental human rights include the rights of women and children. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Ambassador. What is it, Right Honorable Speaker? What is it? Right Honorable Speaker, I raise for your procedure under Rule 50 of our rule of procedure, sub Rule 4. And uh, my good colleague, Honorable Abdullah Makami, raised this issue and the Rule 50, but I'm raising Rule 50, sub Rule 4, in good pace. So let me not uh, panic me because I want to apologize for these hours if you mistake me what I'm saying in this house. And even through one speaker. And what I can add, because you sanction me, I cannot debate. But this matter is good for me to tell you the importance. No, now we are talking about the support of the child. But who brings this child in this in the world? No. Is the mother and the father. Procedure. procedure. I, I'm reading right procedure. I'm reading the phone of your procedure. <laughs> Uh, because I'm not going to debate. I just want to apologize. But for, while the members 
are debating, mm -hmm. let not debating about the shy, but let debating also. Who bring the shy? Procedure, you, procedure. You are out of order. Procedure, yes. procedure. You are out of yes. no, no, order. No, no, speaker, I'm very sure. That's what I'm saying. While our colleagues are debating, let debate also. Who bring the child? No. Mother or father? They no, you know also. Who bringing this? So let me call, let, let, let Procedure, have, procedure. No, no, what are you saying to me, speaker? I didn't put the procedure. I yeah. apologize because members, procedure. they tell me why I'm talking. They don't understand me. Procedure, but no, when you are talking, yeah. Consider that the child that. have been brought by mother and father. I conclude. No, it's okay. I conclude. Yes, honorable. Okay. Procedure. Uh, thanks for the chance, uh, honorable speaker. Uh, I rise uh, with the intention to support uh, the motion with some amendment on the prayer sought. Uh, in instead of it being now therefore be it resolved by the assembly that in accordance with rule 53 6d 95 49.2d 51 and 121 of the treaty and rule 26 of the rule of procedure of the assembly the assembly recommend to the council uh, recommend to the council to, de to develop an EAC model policy framework that provides for enabling work environment for working mothers in the service of the community, their newborn or infant children, as well as the same in partner state. So the amendment is to try to, to strike out to develop and implement policies and program. You will strike out that. And in, in instead says to develop a model policy framework for EAC that provides for enabling blah 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 until as well as the same in partner states. The second amendment, uh, which is uh, Prayer B is to establish daycare centers, not daycare center, uh, at the EAC organ and institution and in the partner state to facilitate and enable mothers to attend to their children during working hours. Those are the few amendments I'd wanted to share. I beg to submit. Thank you. Honorable Luke, are you proposing the amendment to the motion? Because we'll have to 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 refer to the mover if she accepts it or not. And there is also Honorable Dr. Makame who 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 proposed that uh, the mover adds a new prayer. You know, we had A, B, C, D, A, B, C, and uh, Honorable Makame was proposing that we add D, which will be, which would be this, that the council to develop a East African community regional law on gender, which should be the gender bill. And uh, this is the proposal of Makame addressed to Honorable Iman. If she accepts it, we add it. Information, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Honorable. Th thank you, Mr. Speaker. I had uh, communicated with my sister, Honorable Iman, who indicated that she's in acceptance of that. But also, there was a submission by Honorable Rosa Cole to have uh, the, the council to consider developing policies of having uh, paid leave for 
pregnant women and mothers a newly born so th that one also also should go in as e so in the to also reflect the submission by honorable call so we are proposing we had proposed to have two more in recommendations that one to have uh, that one the law the regional law and the one for sick, paid sick leave thank you mr speaker yes honorable Farada. mr speaker Right, Honorable Speaker. Wait. Procedure just. Procedure. Right, Honorable Speaker. Since Honorable Falhada is the mover of the motion, I think it will be probably procedural that you start with the council and then she comes later when she's responding. You are right. Thank you. You are right. Let's give the floor to, to the council members. If they have to contribute on this motion, then we'll come back to you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Ours will be very short. We stand to support the motion as proposed by Honorable Iman. As has been said, it has been brought in belatedly. It has been, it should have been tabled a long time ago. It's appropriate, it's noble, and it's workable. So we support the, the motion. Here in Rwanda, most institutions, and not only institutions, in fact, everywhere, almost in the country, we have established uh, daycare centers for infants. And they do not only serve procedure, Mr. Speaker. Procedure, so. Minister. There is a procedure that they have to proceed from first from him. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I beg indulgence of the Honorable Minister, because the rules of procedure prescribe that uh, the Rule 11, that uh, time of the debate of the Assembly concludes at one. So, Mr. Speaker, as we are having some issues to conclude, and the Honorable Minister is also on the floor, let's extend time to deliberate and conclude the business we have, and then we we can discuss. So I'm, I'm proposing to uh, extend time until we conclude the order of the business. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have seconders? The whole house is second. Thank you. So those who are in favor of extending time, they say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Honorable Minister. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, I was saying that here in Rwanda, daycare centers for children and infants are established almost everywhere as a matter of policy. So I would suggest that uh, benchmarking should be made to see, I mean, to borrow from uh, what has been done here. In fact, the practice, as far as I know here, is that uh, uh, the parents also contribute, make some token contribution to the to the center. The institutions contribute, but also the parents make some contribution. But some benchmarking can be made. But we just support the motion as it is with its recommendations. I thank you. Honorable Minister. Honorable Zipora, did you want to contribute? You insisted. Right, Honorable okay. Speaker. I was only. Can you? Procedure, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Honorable Mary. Uh, I think that procedurally, once the minister has replied, has contributed, the next person should be the mover of the motion and we conclude. But she's giving an information. She's, she said it's an information that she want to bring. I'm seeking information from you, right honorable speaker, because you did not indicate that you are not taking the second round of contributors to the motion. Thank you. Maybe next time, let's, let's proceed. 
now honorable iman right honorable speaker thank you very much i want to um extend my gratitude towards members of um my colleagues who actually contributed uh into this timely motion um and right honorable speaker the motion um emphasize the need to adopt policies establish facilities and provide necessary support to ensure an enabling environment for working mothers and within the eac right honorable speaker as a living proof and myself i'm a mother and i served the 12th parliament in um senate of kenya and i had a child while serving the senate um and it was quite difficult because where i lived and where i and uh, execute my um legislative and um roles was so difficult the maternity leave that we were given was 90 days and surely within um the first six months of child um, developing is very crucial and very important. As a mother who breastfeed her kids for two years, for six months was actually difficult for me as a legislator, a female legislator. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, um, the environment that we are talking about for mothers uh, to actually have um, um, environment where young mothers, not only legislators, but also our staff or the staff in that matter. And uh, to just um, align with the treaties uh, provision and rules of the procedures, uh, Mr. Speaker, in the National Assembly, where Honorable Sankok served, there was a female legislator from coastal region, from Kilifi. Her name was Zuleka Hassan. She walked in with her baby in the parliament while breastfeeding. Because we don't have such facilities or a room where and our female legislators or the, um, women who works at uh, the precinct of the parliament where she could have even, and that time they had a very crucial motion to pass. And then not only Kenya or East Africa, Mr. Speaker, there was an Australia Senator as well in Australia parliament where she walked in in 2017 while breastfeeding her kid, her child, and it was like four months, five months. So Mr. Speaker, allow me to appreciate members and the Council of Ministers who um, made a uh, vast um, contribution into this uh, matter. I have um, two more resolution from Honorable um, Makame and Honorable Akol Rose. And there was an amendment as well from Honorable Thompson, which I quite didn't get yet, but in meantime, we will have it. Um, allow me, Honorable Speaker, to actually um, appreciate Honorable Guy Denk, who also um, streamlined and providing suitable facilities, she said, and allow me, Honorable Member, to um, um, honorable, right Honorable Speaker, to appreciate Honorable Makame, a champion for he, for she, Honorable Akol Rose, Honorable Kim Guy, although he brought his personal issue to me. <laughs> But I appreciate him, although I quite, under, I quite don't understand what he was trying to pass over on his recommendation, but I can understand him. Honorable Black Siranda, 
Honorable Aisha, Honorable Clement, the biggest he for she, Honorable Caroline, Honorable Kadogo, um, the geopolitician, Honorable Sankok, <laughs> he for she champion, <laughs> Honorable Ann Ito, my senior, Honorable Fatuman Dagiza, our SG, and Honorable Thompson. And Honorable, uh, say, say. Ah, Honorable Mary, thank you so much, Honorable members, and Honorable Speaker, today, uh, um, and Honorable Ministers, thank you so much. Um, today, I came to realize that this gender issue doesn't only touch women, but it also touch men, because we go along, and um, whatever happens to us happens to them and we really appreciate them. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. And I I beg to submit. So your, your motion will be amended? Yes, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Honorable members, I now put the question that this assembly do, do resolve to add the African, the East African Community Council of Ministers to urgently facilitate and support mothers of newborn and infant children in the service of the community as amended. Those in favor say aye. Those to the contrary say nay. The ayes have it. We proceed to I order three. Motion for a resolution, resolution seeking leave of the assembly to grant leave to Honorable James Kakosa to introduce a bill entitled East African Community Financial Management Bill 2023 by way of motion. Honorable Kakosa, before you, you move your motion, this house has, has been informed that the Council of Ministers is working on a similar bill. If you would you want to give your points to the Council of, of Ministers, or would you yourself move your motion and maybe advise the Council of Ministers if needed? Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I'd like to continue moving the motion and then work together the input they want to make in because the record has it on Hansard that the last parliament, this motion is was from three parliaments. You are welcome. You can move your motion then. Yes. Proceed, dear right honorable. Proceed, dear right honorable. Thank you. Proceed, dear right, right honorable. honorable speaker. Of course, this motion is not new on the hands of Parliament. I want to maybe inform members that in the last year or four when I came in here, just move your motion so that members are aware. Procedure. Right Honorable Speaker, whereas Chapter 28 of the Treaty for Establishment of the East African Community provides so Please um, procedure. Right on our speaker. Procedure. Motion for resolution. No procedure. No? I'm reading the motion now. Procedure. This procedure. Thank you, right on our speaker. I think you should first move the motion and get second yeah, before you proceed. Uh, procedure matter, Mr. Speaker. We still do not have a copy of the motion, and it would be good to allow time to circulate. 
so that uh, we follow what is being said. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just Procedure, maybe... Speaker. Procedure. I thought the motion by the Honourable Speaker was saturated yesterday. I'm just Procedure. receiving it now, and others have not received it. Well, they have. Procedure. Yeah. Do we have members who do not have the document? Procedure, right, Honourable Speaker. Oh, to the whole house. What happened? Distributed? But they don't have, they're distributing now. Yes, now I think you you can proceed. Procedure, right honorable. Right, right honorable speaker, I move a motion for resolution seeking leave of the assembly to introduce an East African Community Finance Management Bill moved under Article 491, of the Treaty and Rules 26 of the Rules of Procedure of the Assembly. I beg. Do you have move. seconders? Honorable Caroline, Honorable Aisha, Honorable Sankok, Honorable Gaiden, and others. Now, now you can justify your motion. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Whereas Chapter 28 of the Treaty of Establishment of the East African Community provides for financial matters relating to the community, and whereas public finance management comprises all components of the budget processes, both the upstream, including strategic planning, medium-term expenditure framework, annual budgeting, and downstream, including revenue management, procurement, control, accounting, reporting, monitoring, evaluation, and audits and oversight. Recognizing that Article 135, of the treaty empower the council of ministers to make financial rules and regulations of the community. And in 2012, the council made, the, made and issued the East African financial rules and regulations which are currently applicable to the finances of the community, aware that in addition to the financial rules and regulations issued by the council, the assembly enacted the East African Community Budget Act 2009 to provide for the budgeting process in accordance with Act 132 of the treaty. Further recognizing the good public finance management systems are important for democratic governance, macroeconomic stability, effective uses of available resources, can foster effectiveness in allocation of resources and help prevent corruption and fraud, concerned that both the Budget Act and the financial rules and regulations of the committee do not adequately provide for the entire public finance management cycle and the gaps in the finance management systems of the community are breeding ground of mis for misallocation and misuse of resources of the community Mindful that reform of the ineffective public finance management systems, processes, and institutions are critical to maximizing the effective use of limited public resources, creates the highest level of transparency, accountability in management of finances, and gives confidence to development partners to contribute and support development initiatives of any community of all any institutions. Recognizing that Article 49, one of the Twitter provides for assembly as a legislative organ of the community, which enacts the legislation of the community by means of bills and passed by the assembly. Aware that the Committee of General Purpose of the Assembly has recommended to this assembly 
to enact a comprehensive community finance management act further aware that under article 59.1 of the treaty any member may propose any motion to introduce any bill in the assembly recognizing that rule 64.5 of the rules of procedure of the assembly requires that a private member's bill shall be introduced by way of motion to which shall be attached to the proposed draft by the bill. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the assembly as follows, that in accordance my play of Article 49.159 of the Treaty Rule 64 of the Rules of Procedure of the Assembly, the assembly grants to me leave to introduce an East African Community Finance Management Bill to provide a comprehensive public finance management system of the community. I beg to submit, right honorable speaker. Thank you, honorable Kakoza. Procedure, right honorable. Honorable members. Procedure. The motion we have is that uh, this assembly do resolve to grant leave to Honorable James Kakoza to introduce a bill entitled the East African Community Financial Management Bill 2023. Debate is open. Procedure, Mr. Speaker. Procedure. Procedure, Procedure. 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 Right, Honorable. Mr. Speaker, Procedure. You had not justified? Procedure. Procedure. Yes, Procedure. Procedure. Who raised Procedure, the right honorable. Yeah. Yes, honorable, honorable Rose. Oh, thank you, right honorable speaker. First and foremost, I want to thank honorable Kakosa for bringing this motion, reminding this house that we actually don't have the Financial Management Act. Now, the procedural matter I bring, right honorable speaker, as even stated by right uh, by honorable Kakosa, is that for the last three assemblies. This the fourth, third, and second. We, the private members' bills have always been proposed by members to address this matter of having a financial management legal framework for the community. But council in the fourth year actually stopped us, or for that matter, the member that had again proposed this and stated that they are in the process of uh, bringing a, a financial management legal framework. And secondly, that a private member could not actually bring this bill because it has financial implications. Financial implications is a limitation by the treaty. So it can only be council. So right now, speaker, wouldn't it be procedurally right for either a council member or uh, council to the community to brief this assembly of any steps taken by a council to process this bill. And if there are no steps taken, we need to know so that either we continue as, private, uh, as a private member's bill or council is already in the process of bringing such a bill. Right from the school, would it be proceeded right for them to provide such information to the assembly? Right, Honorable, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Akolo Rose. I, I give the floor to, because Honorable Akolo is seeking information Pro from the Yeah, proceed there, right, Honorable Speaker. Speaker. Proceed there, Mr. Speaker. Proceed yes. Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the motion presented by Honorable Kakosa was straightforward. Was? Straightforward. It, uh, it really in indicated what was required and uh, what this house is required to do. So, Mr. Speaker, he's seeking leave. And I, I, I seek to invoke Rule 48, Mr. Speaker, closure of debate. Right. So that the question is now put. Why? That, uh, either we grant leave to Honorable Kakosa 
or not? Because that's what is required. Really, we don't need to debate it now. If we are granting him leave, then when the, 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 it comes for the first time, then we can debate now that bill when it is tabled. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Proceed, Mr. Speaker. So our CTC is uh, requesting a floor. I give him the floor. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Uh, let me begin by giving you the, the latest information in this respect. The council had a meeting in Bujumbura way back in February this year during their 43rd meeting. They issued directives to the Secretariat. The first one was to prepare a comprehensive paper for a law on public finance management and administration. So that that, that directive is already in, in, in place. And the directive also required the Secretariat to share it with partner states. The second directive was to the effect that uh, partner states should conduct and finalize internal consultations concerning that, 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 uh, that paper. And, uh, and then, of course, they would put the report back, and then the Secretariat would, uh, would follow up the process. Beyond that, right, Honorable Speaker, you are aware that uh, during the 23rd summit, the summit, besides uh, adopting the new financing formula, has also tasked the council to look at uh, spending rationalization and other areas that must feed into this law. Besides that, again, right honorable speaker, you are aware that under Article 14, sub Article 3G, and Article 135 of the treaty, yes. it is a function of the council to issue financial rules and regulations. And uh, of course, they have issued financial rules and regulations that are in force. But beyond that, the council has already embarked on having a public finance management legislation. This was done way back in February. So it would be strange for a process that started in February this year for the house to meet in December and grant leave to a private member to start the same process. I'm, I'm reporting that uh, this is what we have on record. And I, I would suggest, right honorable speaker, that uh, perhaps honorable Kakosa, because we know it's very resourceful, depending on his programs and schedules, would, would perhaps come and participate in the meetings that the Secretary is organizing and influence the outcome of that process. But will not be wow. proper to, because this is a function of the council. It is already well, in the process since February. It will look very strange to grant a private member to do the same well, process in December. I thank you for your, for your attention. Well, I'll see the line of the speaker. Procedure, Ronald Speaker. Yes, Procedure. Thank you very much, Ronald Speaker, for giving me the floor. I think even the our citizen, my good doctor, respond to this house. But he said the council gave directive. But directive on what? Because when the council gave directive, they give to the junior people in the community. Now, Honorable Kagoza seeking leave of this house. It's not the mandate of CTC to direct this house. We have to get leave of this house to Honorable Kagoza because he's going to consult with the council. Later on, when they agree, then they will be in good faith. And the house will be. But I ask you one members. We are not the members of the council. We are members of this house. And this seek of the leap is a motion of this house. And we have to approve this motion and grant Honorable Kagoza to go forward. If he's going to die, let him go and die with those people who have run me. Uh, not, uh, uh, by the way, this is not the first motion. It's the second motion. Sup Honorable Supplementary information. Uh, Right, Honorable speaker, speaker, thank you, Honorable Kim, to give him their way. First of all, the record of the hazard, the record of the hazard is there. That in the last parliament, we debated the same matter. And it's the same council which committed itself to bring a bill after six months. It didn't appear. It's the same council which said they have direct to do the bill, they didn't. The last parliament assigned me duty to seek leave in this house 
is the work which was pending by Honorable Abdul Kadir. And we adapted that within the next year program, we shall seek leave. Honorable members, this bill, this bill, this leave I'm seeking for, is strengthen the efficiency of the laws we have that we have to close the illicit flows of abuse of the laws we have. I can highlight in the Budget Act. The total supplemental expenditure that requires additional resources over the above what is appropriated by the Assembly shall not exceed 5% of the total approved budget for the financial year without a prior approval of the Assembly. It has been abused. The bill I'm seeking is to cover the sanctions on the audited reports, and this is our work as parliament. This is our work as parliament. I cannot believe that all these records and audited recommendations by professionals, the CTC is still laying that they are giving directives. No, I'm seeking a leave to put sanctions on the flaws and the misuse and abuse of the law. That's the leave I'm seeking for. And this is my mandate under rule which allows the private members be to move. It's not, the, it's not a matter of the council. It's not a matter, it's my right to seek for a leave. If the leave is granted by the house, I'll move forward. If it's not, I will stop there and we'll continue looking at it. That's the information I wanted to give. Procedure. We have a procedure. Yes. yes honorable procedure, Sanford. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, uh, I seek to know if procedurally we had allowed Honorable Kakosa to justify his motion. Because what we are trying to discuss now is his justification. He did not justify the motion. He was not, he, if he was given time to justify his motion, it's okay. But what he's contributing now is like he's justifying the motion. Okay. Uh, 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 right now, Speaker, the Honorable Kagoza, I want to form, because I'm in the floor, Honorable Sanko, Honorable, when he's reading his own motion, already is justified. He's moved and he justified. Now, what we are doing is we need to support him to seek leave of the House to continue on his own bill. Right now, Speaker, let me see the one. You see, if you look the council, uh, the summit decision that have been taken last summit in Arusha, when I come to the Yala in 2017, our panel said they are paying 8.8 400 and some things. Now they are paying seven, they are coming down seven, seven million. The last summit now, they decide that. The financial, sustainable financial mechanism, they decide that is 65 and 35 by GDP. That means if you go to GDP, it will be only Tanzania and Kenya who are going to pay a higher point of order, Mr. Speaker. Order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rose earlier and I invoked uh, procedural order number rule number 48 to, on closure of debate. And uh, Mr. Speaker, you used your seat to derive information from the Honorable CTC who informed the House. And uh, the House is now informed where the Council is with regards to the, the proposed uh, law of the Financial Management Act. Of the from the council. So now, Mr. Speaker, because Honorable Kakosa's motion was straightforward and he was seeking leave and um, invoking rule number 48 so that the question be now put so that we can either grant leave to Honorable Kakosa as a house or we, we deny him the leave so that we conclude this matter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Point of clarification, right, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I'm not going to take any clarification. I'm in follow. And Honorable Makami. But you know how much time will we take to the floor? 
you, we, you only have three minutes normally. Please conclude. Yes, that's why I'm saying the one of the speaker. I want to conclude. That's why I say I don't want to inform you on that one. Honorable uh, Makami, he suspended me not to debate in the last order paper. Now I'm the follower, and now he won't interrupt me. It's not, it's not the right for him to interrupt me. Why don't the speaker I'm say it? To all the members, and I had your members. I have been here for, and Honorable Aden Abdel Gadir moved this, he seek leave of this house, and we guarantee him. And his leave are die because of people are uh, in uh, next to me. But what I'm saying is here now, let guarantee Honorable James Kagoza leave of the house and let go again to die in his next move, but not die in this house. So I'm urging all of you to, to support Honorable Kagoza, what the Honorable CTC are saying, because he's a citizen for the community, including the council and including us. Okay, Let's guarantee you. him thank you. the leave, and then him and CTC and the council, they will agree the way forward. But what I had not agree with the CTC, and it should be very clear, even you, one of the speaker, you should give him the floor, that which directive. Because when they say the council gave directive for financial, what, 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 for who? Is for the council or for those junior uh, people who are disturbing Ayala and are disturbing community. Directly should be very clear. And CTC should make it very clear that financial management of the community should be on the council, not on other people. Thank so, right speaker, honor members, I conclude and I hide all of you. Let approve this uh, sick leave of Honorable Kagoza and go forward. And CTC should clear to this house. Thank you. I beg you, right speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chimigai. Now you have the floor, Honorable Fatuma. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Mine is a clarification, and I want to thank Honorable Kakoza for a good uh, motion. But having listened to the CTC, I'm now a bit confused. Because although the council is an independent uh, institution of the organ of the community, same applies to Ella. But we have to complement each other when it comes to legislation. Now, if the council is coming up with a bill that is the same as the bill that is being proposed by owner, the public finance management bill, what the CTC told us, and they have taken some steps. And of course, what we want, of course, this will also be uh, the wish and also the outcome of the advocacy that has been done by this house, both in ELA 4 and ELA 5, which will be good because what we wanted is a public finance uh, bill, management bill. So since we know the information, should we go ahead and also have allow the public, the public member bill that is do doing almost the same thing. So unless if there is clarity that these are different. And therefore, for me, I would like to seek that we further clarify uh, whether really there are differences in the, these two proposed bills. And if so, urge my brother, Honorable Bokakosa, that has a lot of expertise in this area to beef up the process that the council has taken so that they have strong input from the assembly rather than having parallel processes. So this is my plea so that we go together with the council. But of course the council, if they are committed, should tell us the time frame so that it doesn't take so many years, and yet this is a timely bill. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Information. Information. Honorable Fatum. Oh, information, yes, Honorable Siranda. I, I want to appreciate the wisdom and the spirit of the Honorable Fatuma. Right Honorable Speaker, 
what the Honorable Kakoza is seeking to move, right Honorable Speaker, is a leave to start processes. And if we, we cannot wait for council, once council comes, right Honorable Speaker, there will be time to harmonize. So there is no, is no problem. I think we can proceed. When council finds us on the way, definitely there will be harmonization. So I wanted to pass that information that we can take the two routes Clarification, and along the Mr. way we will, we will harmonize. Clarification. Clarification. M Mr. Speaker. No. Oh. Are you the oh. one who, or was it? Uh, good. It is me. Yes. Mr. Speaker, the responsibility of bringing or initiating bill to the assembly is is raised or it is upon to the as to the council of the ministers for a member of the assembly to initiate a bill it is a subjective once we have been informed that the council has initiated the bill our right to bring or to initiate the bill dies. We cannot initiate because in the future we will have two bills initiated for the assembly to consider. Procedure. Mr. Speaker. Procedure. Mr. Speaker. Procedure, right, Honorable Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me wind Procedure. up. Procedure. Mr. Speaker, I'm saying you... we cannot consider leave Procedure. because considering leave is as if we are considering oh we are we, we, rule. we have a procedure okay. we have to okay. Okay. no it's not yours it's from luke ah okay okay uh, speaker, i want to put the mic i want to direct our attention to the strength of article 59 uh, rule 59 of our rule of procedure no, that's it. That's it. That's it. A rule, uh, yes, the treaty, Article 59, uh, it is Article 59, no, Article 14, uh, Article 14 of the treaty, 14 of the treaty, which has conferred power on the council to initiate bills for consideration by the assembly. Again, our rule of procedures, uh, rule, 64. rule 64 recognize that any member may move uh, or shade or initiate a bill for consideration by this assembly. So the initiation of bill by two organ of the community is a concurrent power. Uh, again, the, the understanding that uh, this uh, Public Financial Management Act, which is being proposed, or a leak, or a leak for it is seek by Honorable Kakosa, can have financial implications. Uh, seem not to be the case because the the Financial Management Act is seeking to regulate how the Secretariat and other spending agencies of the community would abide by financial rules and regulation of this community. It is not establishing structures that would attract funding uh, or budgeting from the council when it is initiating the next budget of 2024-2023. Therefore, I strongly support that this assembly grant leave uh, for consideration of this matter, which is seen by Honorable Kakosa. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I I give the floor to to Honorable Mary, then to Honorable Kim and uh, Honorable Maina, and we close there. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir, I stand with a lot of conflict in my mind. Totally conflicted. On one hand, I have heard what the CTC has said and the need to harmonize and what Honorable Fatuma Ndangiza has said and also the role of the council and also to know that the bill 
that is touching finances needs the support of the council. Because we are likely to have another bill that is not assented to. That one we should bear in mind. It's a very big possibility. Once the, once the council is not in agreement, and particularly on any issue that touches finances, our bill is likely to collect dust on the shelves. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, we also know that it has taken a long time and that parliament after parliament has been crying out for this bill to be tabled by the council and the necessity to regulate the finances of the community. And the fact that year after year, we report, we, we, we debate the audited accounts and there are so many flaws that we find. And that's the need to have this law in place so that we can have a tool that is used even by the council itself. Yes. I therefore want to suggest, Mr. Speaker, that we allow the Honorable Kakosa to present the bill, there is motion, and probably that will put the impetus on the council to speed up their bill. His is a, it's not a motion, it's a bill, also a private member's bill. Let him move it, let him be granted a leave to present his bill. It is only the beginning of the process. And if the council is willing to bring the bill, then it will, Kakoza's, uh, Honorable Kakoza's uh, private member's bill will be overtaken by the council's bill. And if it doesn't come, then we continue and have a private member's bill. At least we'll have done our work. Mr. Speaker, I would like to move. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. And I'm thinking next to my brother, who am I share in legal? I want to inform him that. Uh, Try to be brief because very you, brief, have, very you, have brief, been, very you have brief. been you have been given the floor three times or four times. When others are, are, are still I'm going to be brief, Honorable Speaker. I'm going to be very brief. Honorable Kagoza, we have been a Russia in last in last plenary. Honorable Surrender, seek a leave of the house for the petition to go to the court, and we give the leave. Either the petition is going to die in the court or not going to die, you know, our own problem. Now, Honorable Kagoza is taking the leave. He's taking the leave. No, I'm not taking any clarification. Uh, Honorable Kagoza is taking the leave. Clarification? I'm not taking it. Yes. Clarification. I'm not taking it. Yes, I'm not taking it. So... Cedra. Procedure. Right on, Speaker, let me conclude. What I'm saying here now, if our honorable colleague, any member in this house, he have a right to move a private member bill. And when any member of this house moving a private member bill, he have to seek a leave of this house. And that bill are going to refer to the relevant committee. The committee are going to uh, to consult with the council and they agree and then they will report back to the house. Now, we are not in the stage that we agree or disagree. When the report are being bring by the chairperson of the relevant committee in the house, this is where now. We are going to agree to approve the report or not. But now the Honorable Kagoza is seeking leave of this house. Now, procedure. my chairperson here, my procedure. chairperson Procedure who raised the procedure? Right, Honorable Speaker. Um, we're trying to follow the discussion that's happening in this hall, and we're a bit confused because the last time uh, we understood from your submission that we were not to debate on this motion. So we are seeking clarification of whether this debate has been open and maybe we can get the contributions, the list of members to contribute because it seems everyone is standing with a propo uh, an order or a procedure, so we don't know how to move forward. Maybe we we need to know whether the, the debate has been open and then we take names of contributors. Thank you. Clarif further, clarif further clarification, Mr. Speaker. 
clarification. Yes, Mr. Speaker, when when uh, Honorable Kakuza um, proposed the motion, a number of us seconded it. And if you looked around in the room, most of us belong to the accounts committee. We have several audit queries that are repeated and repeated every year. Honorable Rose mentioned that this Financial Management Act has been in the making since the third and fourth assembly. So when Honorable Makame mentioned that we closed the debate because it's self-explanatory and you put the question, we did not have an opportunity to debate. We thought we were not going to get the opportunity. Now, the interventions that came in have further led to some controversies because it's coming back that the bill is in motion and then we are all, everybody is, con is confused. And especially those who do not belong to the accounts committee to which Honorable Kakosa belongs. The proposed, the motion that he was bringing to the house is, is supposed to help the council to help the community because we have been waiting for through three assemblies. So the debate has not been, it's, we are asking, has the debate been open? Because now we are closing it off. And at this point, because of the intervention of the CTC and the intervention of, of many of us who have said it's in the council hands, it's now something that is going to be blocked completely. And we have all misunderstood it. We have not had the chance to debate and close the debate because, and, and pose the question on the, on the basis of a debate. Yes. So we are really confused in this process. And we are going to end up refusing. I mean, uh, the eyes will be fewer. Uh, and yet, it's a very, very, very relevant motion. So we've ended up opening the debate and not opening it, and confusing ourselves. And in the end, there are more. I do not know where we are on right on the speaker. Thank so, you. Thank you. What yeah. we have here that you've been raising? Procedure. Clarifications. Point of order, it, it, everything like that. We have finished with this issue. We're losing time because of you. If you are ready, let me put this question as I had Procedure. said. Honorable members. Right. Honorable members. I now put the question that this assembly do resolve to grant leave to Honorable James Kakoza to introduce a bill entitled the East African Community Financial Management Bill 2023. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those in the country say nay. The eyes have it. Please. Hey. Oh my God. We proceed to item four. Report of the Committee on Legal Rules and Privileges on the proposed amendments to the rules of procedure of the Assembly by of Motion. Business interrupted on Tuesday, 7th November, 2023. Board members, are you following? We are on item number four, which is about the report of the committee on legal rules and everything. So what we, what I, I would like to remind you that uh, we had three amendments and uh, those am amendments were already voted. There was one from Honorable Clement that was approved and the one of Honorable Siranda and the Honorable Mukulia who had not approved. Then, Procedure, right, Honorable Speaker. Also. The chair of that committee had re requested informal meeting, informal, sorry, had requested to consult more. And um, he requested for a day for an inform informal meeting during this plenary. And uh, the meeting was held as requested. Now, I would ask the chair if there is, if there procedure, are any... Procedure, procedure, procedure. Report. 
Proceed, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, let me report to you that Monday this week, we had the Kamkunji meeting. The meeting was involving all the members of this assembly, but unfortunately, the meeting was not fruitful. We did not uh, uh, succeed on what we planned. Actually, we wanted to inform the members on what, what it will take us to consider in the matrix. And I wanted all the members to come into, uh, into one picture on all the rules written in, in matrix. Before Procedure, I, Mr. Speaker. Before I took Procedure. Thank you very much, Dr. Mr. Nankami. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the chairperson of the Legal Rules and Privileges has already pointed out that uh, the meeting which took place at Kamkunji, which is an informal meeting of the whole house, failed to conclude the business on this matter. And now we are here in a formal meeting. And I'm afraid, Mr. Speaker, whether this formal meeting can be in a position to conclude that business. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm invoking Rule 30. C, a motion for adjournment of this debate so that this one be adjourned until the next sitting of the ALA plenary. I beg to move, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Is it a motion? Have you been seconded? So those who are in favor of Dr. Nakani motion says aye. Those against say nay. You, honorable chair, go and consult more. You go continue your consultations. You come back. Chair procedure. Honorable members, I have to inform you that uh, that uh, I received a petition, a petition from Justice Alliance about the governance issues at EADB, East African Development Bank. And uh, I will refer this petition to, to the committee on legal, and uh, that committee will consult with GP members, uh, uh, with uh, members from account, and then they will come back to us. And uh, and uh, as we are reaching the end of this long journey, we have to to thank all of the members. We have to thank you because. You have been very, very active in participation. You have been active in committee meetings. You have been active 
in plenaries, and you have also been active in trainings. I have to thank you, to thank you for that. I also have to thank the honorable ex-official members who have been participating in these plenary meetings from the beginning and uh, and uh, we wish they could inform their colleagues. We know the ministers are very busy, but as we are sailing the same boat, it will be better for our, for us members and uh, ex-official ones to be working closely together for the benefit of this community. And uh, I would like to, to finish my remarks by thanking again, thanking again the parliament of uh, Rwanda who has hosted us with all the courtesies and these facilities that have been enabled to IALA and to everything. We, our members or IALA members, they are all feeling home in Kigali, in Rwanda. And uh, we recognize that Rwanda chapter, you have been working hard, you have been kind with us. We thank you again. With these remarks, honorable members, I adjourn this house sine die. Thank you.